the risk asset that you're talking about, you know, after you, uh, given the, all the crisis that we have seen right now, for example, like, you know, um, the Japanese natural disaster, mm -hmm. um, the ongoing debt crisis in the Eurozone, sure. um, and also the um, Middle East you know, and, and North Africa and stuff. So what investment that is the most interesting right now? And okay. what sectors that we should, you know, stay away from? Okay, they're, they're really good questions. Um, I, I think that there are a lot of fairly obvious sectors that people are talking about mm. that are maybe directly related to you know the reconstruction efforts in Japan mm, so right. um, I think a lot of the construction sector and the material sector uh, I think that uh, obviously there's demand there we've seen prices already increasing fairly dramatically there uh, mm. I think uh, certain commodities as well we've seen the prices increasing dramatically um, we don't think that's the end of the story we think the liquidity is going to give those kinds of assets are boost. As I say, you know, commodities are always priced at the margin, so any more liquidity coming in is just mm -hmm. going to push commodity prices even higher. Uh, but I, I think there are probably, um, I guess, secondary um, effects in the market from the liquidity. So we think that uh, we think that any stocks that respond to liquidity are going to do really well, and that might be financial stocks where mm -hmm. you know they're still over indebtedness, there's still too much leverage. Well, they'll respond very positively to liquidity coming through the system. So I think financials are interesting. I think emerging markets would do mm -hmm. very well. The more money that's sloshing around, well, that tends to come to emerging markets. In terms of the equity markets? In terms of equity markets, right, I think, right. yeah. I, I think the, the, the set will probably get a, a, a something of a boost from, uh, from, mm -hmm. from all, the, all the liquidity flows that are out there. And I think that's true for most emerging markets. So, um, you know, I guess if you look at specific sectors, mm -hmm. then immediately, you know, some of the energy sectors are going are to do well, uh, mm -hmm. and particularly uh, fossil fuels. I think there's a lot of talk oh. already about what's happening in fossil fuels, so mm -hmm. people might want to be tracking the, the price of bamboo coal fairly closely, right. perhaps, but uh, I think, you know, those kinds of stocks have, have certainly got a, a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen to nuclear programs around the world, and obviously, even within Thailand, there's already been talk about, you know, what's going to happen with nuclear policy going forward, mm -hmm. uh, nuclear power. Um, I, I think that you know what, probably the biggest issue is what China decides to do in terms of nuclear power. They had uh, ten nuclear reactors already uh, lined up as part of a program of development mm -hmm. that they were going to bring online. So I think what China decides to do with its nuclear policy is very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced that. Uh, China will do anything other than try to adopt the uh, the cheapest form of power. So I think nuclear will still be a part of the uh, the Chinese uh, oh, strategy okay. going forward because they, they literally need so much energy uh, right. in, in in China. Um, but I I think that. Um, it's a, there was a very interesting article recently by uh, a guy called Gary Schilling, who's mm -hmm. a very well-known economist. He, uh, he, he's um, made a lot of <coughs> um, fairly insightful predictions in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of his views was that um, in terms of the fossil fuel market, there's going to be a move away from um, what he regards as more volatile sources mm -hmm. of supply. So he thinks that Middle East and North Africa is going to be probably a less interesting uh, supply market to the states, and that they might change from you know generating power using uh, using oil that's sourced in the Middle East and North right. Africa to generating power from perhaps coal that's sourced in Canada, mm -hmm. which they regard as being a, a much more stable source of supply. So mm -hmm. I, I think there are plays like that that are, that are going to come in. But I think you know in general we're going to see um, a very strong six months for pretty well all equity markets, mm -hmm. particularly particularly emerging markets, uh, particularly commodity markets, and I think we'll also see some of that uh, overflow into the currency markets. Um, when the Australian dollar touched 98 cents against the US, we, we, we kind of saw that as a point from which it was likely to rally, and already it's up um, to, to 103, I think it is today. Um, but that, that's, that's probably got quite a bit further to go. Mm. Uh, we think that trend could go 105, possibly even touch, touch close to 110. Oh, um, wow. But that's, it's a very short-term play. That's the mm. one thing to be aware of. If people are going to, uh, to look at these sectors, sure, there's a lot of money to be made.